Hey, welcome, welcome to Market Closing for Tuesday, February 16th. The weekend is over, and usually we get some excitement at the beginning of the week, but we've had a really, really mixed and weird day. Like the day started out crazy, crazy well, but that was short-lived. It was weird. We had such a crazy market today. So we've got three minutes left. Let's look at the charts here and see what the heck is going on. And uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and talk uh, about, well, what's going on. Uh, I do want to quickly touch on, just because we've been publicly talking about these, uh, I, I just sold OGI and Fisker. Uh, now, on that trade, I think I took like a $800-ish uh, loss on that trade. So I did take a loss on that trade. Uh, I did this because I, I sold a bunch of stocks just in the last hour. I wanted to reduce margin. I'm not going to go through the entire list of what I sold, but I sold about 600 k of my portfolio just to get my margin to about 20%. And, and that's because I want to concentrate my purchases going forward. We'll talk about those, uh, but I did post all of those in the uh, in the stock group uh, as far as where where I did a little bit of trimming and cleaning up, and I'm still working on that. But uh, yeah, I want I want my margin under twenty percent, twenty percent max. Like I'm at twenty five. I was at twenty five percent like thirty minutes ago. I'm not comfortable there, especially since my portfolio is not highly diversified because I'm, I'm you know I've I've got a good chunk in in like uh, you know lemonade, uh, Apple, Amazon, tech stocks, Tesla, right. Uh, now, obviously, a big chunk in CCIV. I did not trim anything from CCIV. Love my CCIV. Uh, look at this. Is that fifty-three freaking dollars right now? This is absolutely insane. Uh, absolutely crazy. Uh, so, uh, if if you're having any kind of a lag issue, do a refresh or maybe just lower the quality. Uh, it seems like some people have that issue and others don't. So, hopefully, the recording is perfect though. We've got the closing coming up in about sixty seconds here. We've got Matterport going into the close up about 7%, but look, it's actually selling off into the close. We've got, uh, you know, CCIV rallying into the close, really pushing into the close here. Microvision also pushing into the close with CCIV. Uh, Planet 13 up about 5%. We got uh, Pinterest up about 5%. Let's see how uh, Sauce closed today. SOS, pretty, I mean, this is kind of where we left off. I mean, what a messy day. You know, it was not a clean day today. Not a clean day, not taking profits in CCIV. Nope, uh, nope, no profits taken there. Look at Palantir sell off. Keep a, Remember what I mentioned. It's okay to nibble on this thing, but be prepared for potentially a, you know, a lower price come Friday. And so that's something where I'd rather be prepared to be able to open a larger position in uh, if, if we get to that below 25 target. So we'll see what happens uh, in the coming days here. We do have uh, the closing bell here. Yeah, coming financials up follows up about two. So we're going to we're going to pop that open just a moment. We got audio check. Good. So plug power selling off under $60. Now that's a big sell off at plug. Not what I'm going to get into. Uh, N phase 6%. Look at energy sell off today. Peloton sell off today. GameStop down five. Nine. This is actually a painful day across the board here. Uh, this is interesting. So, okay, we're about to get the closing bell. So let's pop on over to the closing bell. Here. Advanced six, excuse me, a recommendation by uh, Scott Black is up 14% uh, as we approach the close. Uh, that recommendation made just moments ago, of course, on this show. S&P 500 at the close. Down 5 0.2%. NASDAQ down about a third of 1%. Record close for the Dow, Sarah. <laughs> another day, another record high. 31.5, nice. But what a mixed day. Closing bell. I'm Sarah Eisen here with Wilfred Frost and Mike Santoli, CNBC Senior Markets Commentator. Take a look at how we finished up the day on Wall Street. Dow got as high as about 150 points earlier in the session. It closed up 62 points, so sort of in the middle of the range. Salesforce was the biggest contributor to the Dow's gain, and the Dow's now higher for third positive day in four. Take a look at the S&P 500. It closed basically flat hovering near an all-time high. You saw strength in groups today like energy on the back of crude oil surge, given the... What? No, no, no. Maybe oil had some strength, but energy had a little bit of pain today. T t I mean, again, let's let's go look at our own charts over here because th th this mm, there was some pain today, folks. There's definitely some pain today. Palantir down 12.77% after hours flat. We got naked. Uh, let's see. Naked was down 10.4% fuel cell. Look at this. How, what is she talking about? Energy was doing well today. Fuel cell down 9%. Virgin Galactic down 7%. Quantum Scape down. Blink down. Nano Dimension down. Plug down. Sun Power. Enphase. A lot of these energy stocks 
down in the gutter today. Uh, we got uh, Jivo, you know, uh, Biofuel down. Uh, what else do we have here? Lee Auto down today. X Bank down today. I mean, we, when you look at the red here, there's some deep reds here today. Let's see. Uh, one second. Can you link? Okay. Uh, Tesla 2.2. Uh, Tesla. Wow. Ending the day down 2.44%. And uh, we've got a little bit of a softness down uh, off, uh, off in the after hours as well. Slightly flat. Uh, Etsy down 2.3%. We've got, uh, yeah, a little softness here today. We do have the big winners here. I'm going to sort this by top just because this is how we usually look at it. We got Churchill moving in the after hours, still gaining in the after hours between, uh, you know, flat and up about a half percent in the after hours, up 31.64% on the day. Absolutely incredible on the news. Remember, the move from 40 to 50 is, is solely valuation change. So, so nothing. It's almost the same. The, new, the move from like 50 to 52, 53, that's premium for, for more certainty here. And you could even say we weren't even at 40 before. We were at like 37, right? So maybe you got about a 10% premium that you could factor in there. Uh, BNGO did well today. Tilray, we got a little bit uh, coming back here on the marijuana. Uh, again, I did mention that I closed out OGI right here minutes before the closing bell. Looks like I got lucky on that one, uh, closing out just here within the last few minutes because we got a little bit of a... A tiny little uh, uh, movement here in the after. Uh, again, took a tiny haircut on that. Uh, Fisker actually offset a lot of those because I bought that at the same time. Both of those trades really, they traded very sideways on Friday. They, they regained a little bit today, and that was an opportunity to move on those. I still have all my clever leaf uh, holding this, holding my Matterport. These high conviction stocks, I'm holding these no matter what they do. Uh, really just cleaned up some of these smaller random miscellaneous positions that I had. Uh, no point in being scattered in like 10 random extra miscellaneous positions when I can consolidate that, get my margin to a, a more comfortable level when when I'm not really going to make big money if one of them goes up anyway. It doesn't matter. So I, I, I collapsed some smaller positions. We've got, uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, yeah, interesting. Let's see what's moving in the after hours here. After hours, oh, there we go. Shift up 3% in the after hours. Upwork, that's a good one. That's, oh my God, look at Upwork move. Are they reporting today? Is is Upwork reporting? Because that's that's a candlestick right there. Five C. Uh, let's see here. I want to pull it here. Uh, hold on one sec. Let's get rid of Discord here. And let's get to, uh, we want to get to Upwork. Because we're going to have earnings here as well. So let's pull Upwork up and see if we can get some news on Upwork. Uh, although I don't think they're reporting today, but I don't know. So we will pull that up. Uh, give me some tickers if you can as far as who is, uh, who is, who's reporting today. Okay, shift technologies, option apply. Uh, options and shift imply 11% move in share price after earnings. Let's see what they're saying here on Bloomberg. Uh, okay, see, it actually doesn't indicate when we're going to get earnings. That's what we're still wondering. Like, everybody's scratching their head wondering when is Shift going to actually report. Some people say it's today. Some people say it's in the 20s. Some people say it's last week, which it wasn't. It's a mess. Uh, we'll keep an eye on this one. Let's look Upwork really quick. Upwork. Let's see here. Upwork, phenomenal company, by the way. Tilray for what's today? Okay, we'll, we'll take a look at that. We'll see what's going on with that. Uh, let's see. Oh, we plugged this in. Okay. Individual company news. Uh, okay, what do we got here? Upwork. Mm, Upwork price target raised. So we had a price target raised here, but nothing in the after hours to signify this big move. I don't know that they're reporting today either. I don't think they are. But uh, let me go ahead and pull back to Weeble here and see what else is moving in the after hours. So after hours, what else do we have here? After hours, so we got shift, shift up 3%, Upwork up 3% in after hours, Quantum up 3% in after hours, uh, Blink, Fuel Cell. So some of those that sold off up in the after hours here. 
Uh, then we've got uh, Churchill. Actually, now we've got a 2% decline in Churchill in the after hours. And we have Tilray, which apparently we've got uh, somebody mentioned here that Tilray is looking into uh, or, or potentially posting earnings today. We got Sundial. Sundial ended up, how'd Sundial do today? Sundial was 5% with 1% down in after hours. So good. Obviously, net positive. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, okay, so who's reporting today? Let's get let's get reporting today. Who stock earnings today? And we'll go ahead and pull up the Bloomberg News Hub as well, so we can see it. And sometimes it just comes through the main hub as well. Let's jump on over. Let's get the full news. CVS. CVS reported this morning. Uh, CVS beat, but you actually saw Walgreens, for example, sell off afterwards. I wonder how they ended up in the day. So let's see here. Let's get out of this. All right, here we go. News Hub, that's what we want. News Hub. Fastly's reporting. Oh, that'll be nice to see. Let's see. News Hub. Oh, I'm still under Upwork. Okay, hold on. Let me listen to this really quick. Let's tune into this while I get this right. Notorious short squeeze on the stock and 53% losses for Melvin in January. It's become apparent on the long <laughs> side, too. If you remember uh, the silver squeeze that was trending on Twitter, prominent commentators, though, on the Wall Street Bet subreddit forum, urged others not to follow suit because hedge funds were long a silver ETF and could benefit. <laughs> Within the next 90 minutes or so, we will really see the bulk of filings that show hedge funds longs puts and calls as of the end of december now after witnessing what happened last month it's likely that many funds have changed their positions in the six weeks since but some maybe not guys leslie thanks very much for that steve weiss i mean clearly uh, as we always know with all the 13 f's they are, they are backward looking do, do you buy into this idea that uh, You'll see a lot of retail traders fishing around for other short squeezes. I mean, tends to we tend to get more of the long positions and in the 13 Fs than say short positions. Yeah, as a matter of fact, they don't disclose short positions. Uh, they're usually top secret. They do disclose long put positions, so that should be changed. Um, look, the retail traders can can comb the 13 Fs all they want. As you mentioned, they're dated number one, number two. Hedge funds, they're no better performers than anybody else. So I think it's a waste of time to do personally, number one. Number two, they own a portfolio of stocks. So to think you can go in as a retail investor or an institutional investor and cherry pick the top name or top two names is actually ludicrous. Because what if they sell that? You're not going to know till the next 13 years. Okay, so this guy's basically saying don't ride on coattails because, uh, you know, this is dated information, blah, 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 blah whatever dude you're boring okay let's uh let's focus on the news so let's see here uh okay bumble closes 1.5 billion dollar uh ipo yep we knew this okay okay no particular news coming in over here does anybody have a ticker that is reporting earnings after the hours here i'll pull that up but otherwise let's jump on over to the sticks really quick and see what's going on in the after hours here is I'm looking for opportunities. Once I get, uh, yeah, Melvin Capital. <laughs> yeah. Once we get, once we're comfortable where we are with margin, that's that's when we want to be prepared to strike on on our deals, right? And, and so that's that's where I'm now. I, I feel much better. Like I did not like that I ended up sneaking over, uh, you know, 25 percent of margin. Way 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 too much for me. Maybe I'm too conservative. Uh, you could go 4x margin if you wanted to. Down to 20%, very happy with where I am right now. So uh, Upwork, Hydro, okay, Blink, Carvana. So really Upwork, the one pushing right here. Uh, and it's just holding. Let's see how much volume there is on Upwork. Just see if this is a catalyst for into the close. We got extended hours on, but just not. It was just right into the closing minute here. Hmm, Okay. Let's see. After hours. Let's move after hours over a little bit now that we're in after hours. So blink charging, hydro, quantum scape. I mean, no, no significant movements here. Uh, Redfin slightly inching up. Redfin is a company, remember, Redfin's a company we really want to pay attention to over this next week. Uh, oh, there we go. A nice red candlestick as we're talking about Redfin. Uh, oh, that was interesting. Probably just extremely low volume here in terms of what's happening on Redfin. But uh, Redfin, they're going to report. Uh, next week. Very, very important. Let me see. Upwork, Upwork earnings date. 
And uh, no, Upwork is the 23rd. Redfin earnings date. So they're next week. We've got uh, Redfin is next week, Wednesday. So Upwork is a week from today. Redfin is next week, Wednesday. We will see QuantumScape is doing earnings. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't really have a product that they're selling. So, so it's really just an opportunity for them to talk about how great their battery technology is in their earnings discussion. QuantumScape earnings. Let's see if that is indeed today. Uh, QuantumScape earnings down ahead of first earnings report. Oh, yeah, it is today. Okay, that's interesting. So let's see if we can go to the Bloomberg here and see if we have any mention of Quantum. Uh, that's actually interesting. Okay, so we'll pull up. Uh, all right, so we've got our news here on the left. Let's pull up. Oops. Gosh, Bloomberg. Bloomberg does not like running on a Mac, by the way. They, they want you to run this on a PC. Uh, okay, Quantum, so QS. Let's pull that. What's happening to eHang? I'll take a look at that in just one sec. We'll see what's going on. Uh, QuantumScape and uh, Baker Bros stake. Veristem climbs more than 23% post-market on Baker Bros stake. Hmm, interesting. Okay, Warren Buffett stocks, Logitech, Viva, Lulu. Okay, fine. QuantumScape ahead of first earnings. Okay, so we'll keep this up. We don't have info yet on Quantum, but we can keep an eye on this. So we'll just kind of put this to the side here. So uh, somebody says eHang. Fraud reported at eHang. Uh, uh, sometimes this could be short sellers. Let's let's see. Uh, so what do we have? Uh, eHang. eHang fraud. Let's see what they got. eHang down 60%? I don't have any money in eHang. But, uh, oh, here we go. Uh, oh, come on. These guys are such, this is literally all they do. Literally all Block and Leviton does is short sell, short sell, short sell, lawsuit, 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 lawsuit. Like, follow them on Twitter every day. Lawsuit, 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 lawsuit. Sometimes the market can overreact to this. Let's let's try to decipher this a little bit. I don't know much about eHang. Isn't this the, the drone one? Uh, holy crap, 60%. Jeez, man, that's disgusting. Okay, 60% uh, of the day, but it's already up in the after hours about 6%, but still, oh my God. That's a, oh, that's a disgusting drop. That's huge. Holy smokes. And look how, oh, oh, look at that news hit. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, that is, no, that is not. See, <sighs> Solar Edge has earnings today. Okay, we'll check that out. Uh, Solar Edge. Yeah, they just lost that inverter deal with Tesla. Here's the problem with these short sellers. The short sellers, they take their short position right here. Then they go, tweet. Fall, 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 fall. Close short position. Thank you for all the profits. Thank you for the tendies, basically, on the shorts. It's honestly the biggest fraud of a system that exists that way. Because when people hear lawsuit, they freak out, right? But if you're a law firm, you could do this all day long. You know, the, the incentives are highly misaligned here. Highly, highly misaligned. And I know this is a notorious short seller. Uh, analyst Wolfpack Research it, it issued a scathing report entitled Ehang, a stock promotion destined to crash and burn. Oh my God, come on. It sounds like a short seller. Uh, all right, download the full report. Dude, whatever, let's go. Did I get my download or is this it? How many times are you going to make me tell you? Oh my God. <laughs> Just let me download it, would you? No. You can't even let me download their research. Morons. I hate that. <laughs> okay. We are short eHang. Great. You just made lots of money. Today, we reveal why eHang NASDAQ is an absolute stock promotion built on largely fabricated revenues based on sham sales contracts with a customer who appears to us to be more interested in helping inflate the value of its investment in eH, that is, pump and dump eH stock price than actually buying its products. Dude. Just the way this reads, you know this is not unbiased. You know this is not news. 
this is a hit piece. And I have no stake in EH. Uh, nothing. I don't know anything about EH, really. I'm just looking at this. Somebody neutral looking in on this? This I'm skeptical about this. This is just another hit piece here. Okay. EH has perpetuated its story with a collection of lies about its products, manufacturing revenues, partnerships, and potential regulatory approval of its proposed main business, an autonomous aerial vehicle. Jeez, man. Summary. We conclude that the relationship with this customer is a sham. A uh, major customer referred to as um, Kunziang. We've gathered extensive evidence, including behind the scenes photographs, recorded phone calls, and videos of on site visits. Uh, okay, okay, exaggerated the physical presence. Uh, out of three addresses listed on the website, one is a hotel, one is the 13th floor of an 11th story office building, and the last one had only one employee in the office on a weekday afternoon. Well, a lot of people are, in fairness, working at home, but then again, if this is an aerial drone facility, it probably should be more people working, but who knows? Uh, to the extent that they sell it. Okay. So, uh, you know, if somebody was highly interested in this particular stock, obviously read this. But let's look at Bloomberg on this. Let's jump into Bloomberg. And then so, Oh, here we go. We got some information on uh, the new forms coming out. Uh, Berkshire stake in AbbVie up to 20%. Up 20%. To 25.5 million shares. Berkshire shows 48.5 million share stake in Chevron? Warren Buffett. Oh, my God. Berkshire, Wells Fargo stake down 59% to 52.4 million shares. That's a big layoff right there. That's a big sell-off. Uh, butterfly. Okay, okay, we're getting a lot of news coming in here on the on the tape. Uh, T-Mobile stake up uh, almost uh, over double. Over doubled the stake in T-Mobile. Wow. Trying to milk those dividends, huh? What's the dividend right now on T-Mobile? T-Mobile dividend. Held Verizon stable. Oh, T-Mobile doesn't have dividends? What? Oh, I'm thinking of Verizon. Verizon and AT&T. Yeah, there's no dividend yield on T-Mobile. Oh, uh, Verizon stock is 4.6%. Pretty good dividend stock. And at t is 7.18%. Jeez. Uh, let's see. Berkshire General General Motors stake down 9% to 72.5 million shares. That's going to hurt a little bit on uh, GM. Yeah, let's go ahead and pull up GM. Let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, E-Hang's already coming back up a little bit. I, I think this is... I would almost consider trading this off the dip, honestly. Because these people are scumbags. And I'm sorry. Like, I, I share, like, I'm happy to share, like, give credibility uh, where credibility is due. But this is just a short seller who either got burned and, and they're bitter or they, um, they're they trying to make a quick buck, right? And, and my take is they're trying to make a quick buck. So this thing is selling for 51 bucks, which is back at, I mean, it's just, it's run since January, right? So... Just, I know so little about this company. I, I don't know that I could really swing this. I mean, as as just a purely technical trade, I wouldn't be surprised if this moves another 20 percentage points, honestly. Uh, it just it wouldn't surprise me at all. This this lawsuit crap is bull crap. Uh, you know what? Just just for giggles, I'm gonna make that a trade and I'll get out of it at some point in the future, but I'll put a little bit in here. Extended hours. I don't know. What do we want to put in? That's probably too much. That's too much. Let's put in 500 bucks. No, I'm sorry. Uh, 600 shares. 600 shares, 27K. Limit. I have to go limit. This is going to limit me up. I don't know. 51.5, whatever. Just basically putting it in an after hours market order. And 30K. Okay, so I'm putting 30K in. Okay. We'll see what happens. We'll see how it shrinks. No guarantees, but after these short seller reports, that, that can happen. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how this balances out. Uh, and that is just purely off, off the hit piece here uh, in terms of that. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Did that execute? I think that executed. So, yeah. I Okay, I'm going to mention that really quick here. I'm going to do a quick alert. You guys actually got the benefit of hearing about this first, but that's okay. We're going to set this really quick. Meet Kevin Alerts. Uh, 
just bought 30k as a purely swing trade after short seller hit piece on EH. Uh, purely swing. Okay. Awesome. Okay, cool. So I placed uh, I placed a bet here. I see the comment on shift earnings. I will see. I don't think it's out today. Uh, okay, so I did just place a trade on EH solely, and I know this is only complete speculation that the market is going to digest the nonsense the short seller put out, and this sixty percent sell off was was extreme. I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow this is up twenty percent. It's a small stake. This is not like a high conviction trade. It's just a little bit of a swing trade. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how the momentum changes tomorrow. Uh, okay, so what else do we have here in the after hours? We got Churchill, Sundial, both down about 2%. Uh, Caster is down, Torchlight, 2%. Okay, so some of the big gainers today are down about 2%. Uh, somebody mentioned Shift. Let's see if Shift has done their earnings here. Let's hop on over. And... Uh, Okay, so I want to see what other updates we had here. Avis, oh, Avis reported. Avis reported a loss of 36 cents a share, and they expected 40 cents a share as a loss. So it actually beat. Okay, Avis beat on expectations. Okay, let's see. Quantum has not reported yet. Hmm. What's this? Quantum presentation 2021. Something about solid state. Okay, we'll look at that in just a moment. Let's just put that aside for a sec. See if we, oh, here we go. A Berkshire reports new stake in Verizon. There you go. There's the dividend for Berkshire. And Marsh and McLennan. Mc, it's always interesting seeing what, what Buffett's up to. Uh, I, I don't follow his stuff. To, the, to a T at all, or, or honestly, barely, but uh, it is interesting. Okay, uh, we want to see if Shift reported. So Tesla, please. Yeah, let's go to Shift. Let's see if Shift. I don't think they did, but we'll pull them up. We'll, we'll see if Shift has any news for us. Okay. Okay. No, nothing, nothing on Shift yet. So still waiting here. Uh, Berkshire exits position in M and T Bank. M and T Bank. Yeah, we're getting a lot of these reports in now of, of sort of these uh, changes in holdings. All right, let's take a quick peek at Quantum. What do they got here? Mm, oh, look at this. Elliot buys Evergy, exits eBay. These are all the new filings that are coming out in terms of what. Uh, hedge funds are, are buying and selling right now. So kind of an interesting day to day. Uh, okay, what do we have here? So this was just released. Okay, so here's another excitement building piece from Quantum. Mm, can't really, I wonder if I could just download this PDF. It'll load like 10 times easier. Let's try to get this downloaded. Uh, in the meantime, let me quickly see what Sarah Eisen here is saying while I try to download this. Stocks moving as a result of this filing include Chevron and Verizon. Yeah. Berkshire Hathaway revealing stakes in both. We talked about that already, like eight or ten minutes ago. <laughs> we beat them to this so hardcore. In Chevron, that's as of December 31st. And in Verizon, 147 million shares worth nearly $9 billion as of the end of of December. Now, these two names, uh, they had actually held the stock, uh, both stocks, as of uh, September 30th, the previous quarter, uh, but they had been kept confidential before. So this is the first we're learning about these two names, although it appears that Berkshire Hathaway has been holding them for quite some time. Uh, also took a much smaller new stake in Marsh and McLennan, guys. He's also no longer reporting a position in PNC Financial and JP Morgan, which uh, is interesting. An uh, ongoing uh, move in that direction to sell down their position in the banks. Leslie, thanks so much. Uh, QuantumScape out with quarterly reports. Let's get to fill the bucket. Here we go. Let's listen. 
of Quantum's game, moving a little bit higher uh, after the company reported a fourth quarter result, and go. nobody really had an estimate what to expect. So this doesn't mean a whole lot. They lost $2.41 a share. Again, there was no estimate out there. This is their first report since going public. Again, they are pre-revenue. But there are three important announcements that the company has just made. First of all, they are developing a pre-pilot line uh, cell facility That'll be developed in San Jose. Second of all, they plan to enter 2022 with over $900 million in liquidity. That is enough, they say, to see them through first production. And finally, they plan to spend between $230 and $290 million in OPEX and CAPEX to develop multi-layer cells. You take those three announcements together, and that's one reason why people are looking at this saying, okay, we've got some developments here from this company. We will hop on the analyst call, which starts in about 35 minutes. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't see that much excitement in what they announced there. Uh, but then, then again, you know, that's it's to be expected that, uh, I mean, what are they supposed to announce? They're planning to have their battery in 2024. You know, it's like, yay, good progress. I mean, hey, it excites people. So you can't, nothing wrong with that. But uh, it, look, great company. Love it. Never took a big position in this one, though, personally. And, uh, you know, not, not ready to do that either. Yeah, probably, you know, when we get closer to like 2022, when people have forgotten about this company, that could be a little bit more of an entertaining play for me for QuantumScape. That, uh, that I would like, you know, then the, and, and I also feel that way about plug power, by the way, you know, think about it, you know, a lot of the, the really hyped up stocks right now that aren't really going to be players for a while, like why buy them now? Buy them when people have forgotten about them. <laughs> uh, just obviously the, the thoughts that I have right now on these. And, and that's why I'm more concentrated in other positions. So, uh, okay, let's see what else do we have. We'll go back to the sticks here in just a moment. But yeah, good move on quantum. Absolutely great. So uh, let's see what else we can do. Okay, let's go to, let's go to the candlesticks again. If for some reason... Uh, the quality is still blurry, uh, you can listen. <laughs> and I have no idea if there's blur, why there would be. Nothing has changed. Okay, let's jump on over to the sticks. So what do we got here? Torch and After Hours, dropping a little bit more here. Uh, Sens and Churchill Capital Group. Churchill Capital Group. Going back to $50, down about 3.4% here. Torchlight, down about 6%. We've got, uh, there we go. Ehang, moving up. Yes. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, I expect this. Yeah, I've, yeah, well, I mean, uh, e, e, look, these short seller reports are such, I mean, you you read how that read. It, it literally is the opposite of neutral. It's bull crap. So, you know, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I mean, this could sell right back off. I, I don't know. I'm probably, I probably won't sell out of this uh, for a few days, though, because usually it takes a little bit of time for people to go, oh, this short seller is just smoking crack because they want to make some money. Hmm. But they just gave me a cheaper entry point into the stock. Keep that in mind. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, okay. All right. Let's see here. So we'll see how that develops. Let's see. Otherwise, not much else happening in the afters. Let's go to the news again. This is ridiculous. I'm trying to, I was trying to get this PDF out of here so I could read it a little bit better, but I'll have to do that later. For some reason, this is like extremely difficult to save just to my desktop, which is really shocking. Like he wants me to email it to myself, which that doesn't work. Uh, requires the internet. I'm connected to the internet. It's stupid. The Bloomberg terminal sometimes for, for actually getting documents out. Oh my gosh. They make it a little challenging. I don't want to print it. So whatever. I'll, I'll look into that later. We'll break it down later. It's just going to, it's a marketing piece on QuantumScape. That's all this is. All right. Let's go back to the news hub. Okay, here we go. So what else is happening here? Uh, Fox News, White House says Biden backs citizenship for 11 million illegal immigrants ahead of bill unveiling. Okay, we got what to expect on the GameStop and Robinhood hearings coming up. That is an interesting topic. I am going to read this a little bit later, though. Okay, 
let's see. Hey, what other news is coming through through the tape here? Mercer International beats 398.2 million versus 381.3 estimated. Mm hmm. Okay. Amazon closes facilities. Energy update. Oh, this is from Texas. Okay. Got it. So unique one-time event. Let's go back to the sticks. Quantascape is a great company. Don't get me wrong. It is a great company. But just keep in mind, they're four years from a product. Uh, three years from a product. So uh, that's that's one of the reasons I'm just, just a little, uh, I'm not going deep on, on a QS right now. Otherwise, not not a lot of movers here. EXPI actually ended up for the day. I'm shocked. Uh, it ended up for the day after the split. Stabilizing. It's real estate, man. You just can't can't get away from that real estate. Enphase ended up down today. Yeah, Enphase. Wow, Enphase got spanked going into the close. 6%. Enphase has had a really hard time staying above 200. Really hard time. It, it, it hits this 190 resistance and bounces around this plus or minus 10 points all the time. 10, 15 points. It's all right. It needs, it needs a breakout. That's fine. End phase is along for me. A microvision giving up some of its gains here in the after hours down somewhere between three to 7%, but low volume. That's why we're getting this volatility here. Uh, OGI down a little bit. Tattoo chef down a little bit. CRISPR down a little bit. Pinterest Tilray. Uh, microvision fall. Eh, but again, low volume here. So, Oh God. Yeah. Very, very, very low volume. So don't, don't panic if you're in microvision. Super low volume, especially if you're trying to sell right now. CCIB stabilizing, pushing up. Let's see what the volume is like after hours today compared to after hours the other days. Low. So we've got 13,000, 2,000, 4,000, 11,000, 12, 12, Okay, so probably around an average of like 7,000, just eyeballing that. And volume over here on Friday, right after the bell, higher, much higher volume on CCIB Friday. Much higher volume. So very, very, very low volume right now on uh, CCAV in after hours. Okay. All right. Wayfair now or below 250. Um, Let me see how it's performing. Oh, EH just gave up some of its gains. That's okay. I, again, EH for me, it's, it's a hold for a few days. I want to see how this plays out. Yeah. Okay, Wayfair. Let's look at Wayfair. W. Okay, Wayfair. You know, at, at uh, 277, you're not paying a terrible premium. It's down 5% today. You're not, you're not, it's down a little bit more after hours. You're not paying a substantial premium to get this thing. I'm, I'm not opposed to picking up uh, Wayfair. We got, let's see where we sit. On the day's calendar. We're at about 275, not recent lows, but we're kind of at that support level, 275, you know, the support level that we had back in September, a little bit of volatility in between there, you know, hasn't been a, a flying stock, you know, briefly it did for a day here, but uh, this is a good company. This is a good company to hold long-term. I like Etsy about two and a half to three times as much as I like this company, but I do like this company. Uh, I do think they have... I see the comment here on JTST. Uh, I, I will I will write that down. JTST. Um, good long term hold. I wouldn't trade this one. I, I would hold this one. Yeah, I, I dude. I see the comment on JTST. <laughs> but yeah, let's see. Uh, thoughts on shift earnings coming soon. Nobody knows when earnings are coming. Somebody, please tell me when earnings are actually coming. Yeah, and then we can do this. But uh, I'm I'm bullish on shift. Very bullish on shift. It depends on. Uh, wait for change. So from a crazy guy to a more conservative one who gave up a stake in crypto investment firm because he's not as bullish as on, on bull because he's not as bullish on crypto as the last guy. I'll have to check that out. Clever on bullish on. Customer service is phenomenal on Wayfair. Somebody here says 918 on uh, shift. Oh yeah, Fastly. Did Fastly report today? Come on. Okay, what's Fastly doing? Half percent in the after hours. That's not enough of a movement to, to signify earnings here. I mean, unless it's just literally flat after earnings. I don't think they are, they reported. 
Okay, let's look at it here. Fastly. Haven't really put my head into Clove. I have to say. Uh, Fastly's tomorrow. So you're going to have to wait another day for Fastly. Yeah. CNBC, White House says Ebola outbreaks in South Africa, in Africa rather, need swift action to prevent catastrophic consequences. COVID lockdown to continue until cases drop below 1,000 per day. Uh, big buy into Chevron by Berkshire. We talked about that already. Domino's Pizza Enterprises, dividend forecast rises 6%. Hmm. I wonder what Domino's is doing after hours now. Dividend forecast goes up. Okay, so that, that's profitability. That's a good thing. It's flat. That's interesting. Flat dominoes after hours. Okay. JetBlue Pilots Union rejects agreement, completing partnership deal with American. I did not know that. I mean, I'm out of the airlines. That's not my circle of competence. But I, I did not know that uh, JetBlue was contemplating a partnership with American. That's fascinating. I could see it. I mean, they, they probably need to have some more M&A mergers and acquisitions here over the next few weeks. Bitcoin around 48.5 flat for the day. Okay, let's listen into CBC for a sec. Oh, it's an ad. They totally put a banner up and juked me. They juked me. Jerks. Totally tricked me. Oh, I forgot I had water in here. Yes. Got to take care of that throat, as they say. Look, now it's Cudlow? Oh my gosh, it's Mnuchin. Oh! Something that could be a risk and something we haven't seen for a long period of time. And that's something that the Fed is going to have to manage very carefully. So with that in mind, <clears throat> there is a risk there, as you noted. Is the stock market irrationally exuberant right now? Well, uh, I I'm always a fan of the market is <laughs> the market. So let me just say, if I were looking at this over the next five years, I'd continue to say that U.S. equities are probably the one of the most attractive places to be, but that investors should expect lower returns over the next four or five years than they've had in the last four or five years. I, I also think, whereas in the last four years, it was easy to just buy market indexes, I, I think you're going to see more winners and losers as the economy changes and, and areas rebound. So the market's clearly priced at, at very high uh, multiples. And in the short term, you know, those are risks that investors are going to need to get comfortable with. Well, I think people are learning that stock prices can go up and down. We've had some episodes of that recently. Um, Secretary Mnuchin, let me just ask you, uh, just talk about re reconciliation. The Democrats are going to use reconciliation. So you only need 51 votes to uh, insert a budget resolution inside the reconciliation parameters. We used this in the Reagan years, Dave Stockman and I and others, uh, for the first time. Uh, you used it for the tax cut bill in 2017. Now, I don't want to get too far in the weeds, but look, reconciliation is supposed to be a tool to reduce spending and deficits and debt. Now, I'm looking at this stimulus package, and I don't see any effort to do that. I see no offsets whatsoever to the gigantic leaps of spending. Now, nobody's pure in this game, but I wanted to get a thought on that. So being used unwisely. I believe reconciliation has been done about 20 times uh, since 1974 when it was put into place. And as you've said, in, in, in many of those cases, several of the cases, both in the Bush administration and in the Trump administration, tax cuts, in that scenario, it's priced over a 10-year period of time. I still think had we not had COVID, Larry, we were, we were on track yes. with an additional amount of growth that, that would have made what was our trillion and a half static uh, potentially be positive.
last week on a small nuclear reactor the size of a garbage can. So I think to get to carbon neutral, and again, the Bill Gates study has it in, in 2050, we need to invest in breakthrough technology. And that's the, something that the U.S. has done and the U.S. has led. And if you look at the U.S., um, we, we've had tremendous, tremendous progress on this. I think that the world priority has to be get China. Is is this any better at all? <laughs> now, now that I'm back, I actually came back, which is crazy. I don't think any better. I think uh, yeah, screens what I think we we I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. I think I'm gonna go with the sticks, and we'll see what happens over the next few minutes. I don't know what's going on. Can I blame Gavin? Somebody please blame Gavin Newsom. Okay, this is a California issue. Uh, yeah, you hear me. I'm First, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, boys and girls, we got screwed today. Oh well. Well, look at this then. Fine. Okay. Not that you can see. It's all out loud. Oh, you think it's down a little bit since I bought it? Uh, it's about it's about six percent positive. Quantum scape about six percent positive. Phase up a little bit. Goals the map board up a little bit. Uh, that's okay. I'm hanging. We hang on to that for a little bit matter uh vision about six percent a little bit of flat post here uh we'll see what happens here uh, yeah probably the, the because texas is going out of power that's that's what it is <laughs> oh now the audio sucks too we we got screwed that's it that's it we're screwed uh yeah pretty much ethernet one i'll try i'll try to turn it on again uh, give it a sec here. I think it's just a mistake. <laughs> oh, there we go. Hold on, it'll switch over. How's that? Is that better? Is that better? Maybe this is better. <laughs> yeah, we need we need donations for better internet. Oh my god! And I have two internets too. That's insane. I don't know. I don't know if this is any better. But uh, okay, let's do a quick little. I, I want to. Oh wow, Microvision is selling off here. Uh, take a look at this. Oh, I don't know if you can take a look at this. Uh, micro hours here. Uh, you know, really, actually, a lot of kind of selling off here in the after hours. You know, uh, lo lots of potential red candles here happen pull pulling up here in the after hours. Not exactly sure why. Clear as day, we missed you. Am I back? Am I back to good? Yes, good. Let's not jinx it. <laughs> uh, okay, so Fubu Blink. Uh, shift one percent. I don't think we've seen any kind of uh, move here, though. On shift from news here, Genworth just reported. Genworth reported. Uh, let's see, net sales of oh, they definitely beat. They beat by like eight percent here. It's not bad. What else do we have here? Australia bond raises potential inflation concern. Berkshire ups. Drug stock stakes while trimming Apple. Oh, Berkshire trimmed Apple. What you doing, man? What you doing, Mr. Mr. Warren? Uh, hmm. Let's see here. What else do we have? Fox News, New York Times, political slam for Republican counts on reopening schools. That's nothing new. Okay. I was laughing. I was horrible. Oh, QuantumScape. So we got the, oh, well, that's just the current report. That's just going to show their pamphlet that they gave out. So nothing really here. First quantum minerals. Okay. Morgan Stanley raises. Oh, Morgan Stanley goes into HelloFresh some more. Uh, quality okay now? Did it get any better? Because I switched back to, to the cabled internet. We'll test that really quick. Uh, someone adds Jericho, adds Disney, exits Splunk, cuts AMD. Did I pre-order a Starlink? I should I should have a Starlink so I could have three internets. You're right. 
it's not a bad idea. Uh, we're good? Oh, we're good now. Okay, well, thank you for saying that. That's good. CNBC Trading Nation, JP Morgan and Microsoft reach all-time highs. Bezos reclaims the world's richest title, richest man title after Tesla slips. Oh, what's Tesla doing in the after hours here? Tesla. All right. Yeah, Tesla's continuing its slip here, 295. Uh, barely, though, in the after hours, right? So let's go to all stocks here. Ehang really trying to push over 10%. Again, I, I think, honestly, with this short seller news, wouldn't shock me at all that this ends up being a $60 stock again soon. We'll see. You know, it, it was a stock that had a lot of uh, enthusiasm behind it, and sometimes that enthusiasm bubble can get killed. So you got to be a little careful. Uh, let's see. Okay. Microvish, 8%. Quantum, 5%. Fubu. Fubu. Fubu coming back. Uh, and EXBI holding. What is CCIV doing? Let's see. CCIV down 2%. It's not uncommon to see a little bit of a sell-off here. Envis announced a $50 million at the market credit facility is the reason for the selling opportunity. We will buy the dip. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, it's also smart. Very, very smart from the uh, the founders or or the, the I should not say the founders the executives over at um, Microvision. They need capital. They need capital to survive because they're not really selling a product. They what they do is they raise money. They use that money to develop and survive until they can finally convince somebody to acquire them. It's kind of the mo. Keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, not saying it's a bad thing. I am not. I I am I am a bull on Microvision. I do not own Microvision. I am a bull on it. I made my money on it, and I am grateful for Microvision for that. CCIV warrants are the way to go. Ah, be careful. Be careful with the warrants because there are redemption rules. There are. Uh, you know, risks built in that I don't know because I haven't looked into the actual terms, but you got to understand the terms. Sometimes when things look like a clear as day arbitrage, they're not. So you got to be careful with the warrants. Michael Burry is still shorting Tesla. Hey, good for him. He's made a few bucks. If he started shorting at 8080, he's made a few dollars. Quantum Ehang continue to trade here in the after hours. It's okay. Let's pull Tesla here quickly again. Tesla's pretty flat here in the after hours. Okay, no, nothing really new here. Let's jump on over briefly here just to see what's going on on the CNBC closing bell. Nope, they got an ad. And over on uh, Larry Kudlow's show now, Fox Business, nothing really exciting happening there. So instead, Sundial giving up some of its gains today. Churchill trying to find, trying to find its balance after the amazingly good news today. Let's go back to all stocks here. Uh, let's see what SOS is doing, too. Let's go jump into this. SOS. SOS, okay. Uh, SOS coming 59, ended today 59% up. Ended at 12.15. That's good. Good for them. Uh, LOL, that's exciting about Cudlow. <laughs> oh, yeah, well. It's Mr. V, V-shaped recovery, right? Yeah. All right. Let me do one look here at the Bloomberg Terminal. 0.72 reduces Amazon, PayPal, and all these other ticker symbols here. SEC says former credit rating agencies have violated security laws. Ooh. Uh, Trump attacks McConnell in statement. Oh. SEC charges Morningstar credit ratings with disclosure failures. Ooh. It's like back to 2008. SEC is trying to prevent the 2008 maybe. <laughs> So let's see what the Trump attack is. Uh, okay. Oh, we don't have it. We just have the headline that there is an attack. Got it. All right. Cool. Nothing, nothing really new now after the hours. Thank you so very much for being here, folks. I'm going to take off. I'm going to go uh, take a sledgehammer to my internet. Appreciate you being here. It's never happened before. I don't think it has. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Check out that coupon code. Thanks for being here again, folks. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.